Hello students. Today we will discuss a very important topic in the case of ideal boson systems which is the field of sound waves. Right, The field of sound waves or it is also referred as the uh, specific heat, heat of solids. Right. So, for that let us consider the vibrational modes of an atom in the solid. Right. So, as in the previous case, that means in the case of black body, we have considered a boson that is a photon, which was a relativistic particle. And here also, the vibrations of the solid is studied as a collection of harmonic oscillators right within an enclosed region and they are actually exchanging condas of energy that is as particles and the particles are called phonons right so actually the lattice vibrations are the exchange of phonons between them okay so here the solid can be considered as a gas of phonons which is enclosed in the volume which is equal to the volume of the solid itself right so for phonons or uh, for the modes of vibration for an electric electromagnetic wave are infinite that means an electromagnetic wave can vibrate or oscillate in any direction with respect to its direction of propagation. But in the case of this phonons or the solid state vibrations, it can only have three vibrations, right? Out of which two are transverse and the third one will be longitudinal. So each and every atom which is placed in a lattice can have two transverse modes of vibration and a single longitudinal vibrations. For that just imagine uh, an atom which is placed in a cubical lattice. So each and every atom will be attached to six other atoms. Right, so in all the three dimensions like x axis, y axis and z axis they will be attached with other atoms. So uh, just imagine of uh, the atom being vibrating in each and every directions. So let us place ourselves in any of our, the axis. Say for example, we are at uh, some value of x. That means we are at the observer is at x equal to something or along the x direction. So that the uh, movements along or the vibrations along y axis as well as z axis will be transverse to us. Right? If you are on, on the x axis, the uh, vibrations of the atom along y axis and uh, z axis will be transverse to us, which are the two modes of transverse vibrations. And uh, the vibration along the same axis, that means x axis itself which will be longitudinal because it is coming towards us and going back. So it is some kind of longitudinal vibration. Right. So any vibration or any modes of vibration of a particle can be considered as sum of or superposition of these three modes of vibration. Right. So all the vibrational modes can be classified into three out of which two will be transverse mode and the third one will be longitudinal right and accordingly the modes uh, velocities of these modes will be different again as in the case of uh, photons the phonons are also massless bosons with the uh, integral spin zero chemical potential and symmetric wave functions so the equations are valid here also and occupancy can be uh, copied from that 
but the only change is that uh, the energy of vibration since it is a harmonic oscillator or quantum harmonic oscillators they will be having a half h cross omega that is the rest energy so the energy of the ith state or nth state will be n plus half h cross omega and again we can have a classical approach as well as quantum approach for this problem so the classical or the basic approach is actually the einstein's model because he was the first one to analyze this uh, sound waves through solids so einstein's model is classical approach actually so at that time or einstein assumed some things some uh, facts that or some assumptions are made by him which are the vibrational modes of each and every atoms in the lattice are independent right so the vibrations of atoms in a solid are independent even the vibrations of an atom along different axes of vibrations are independent that means the vibration along the x axis for an atom is independent of the vibration along y axis that means they are not mutually dependent they are much, uh, not mutually interacting right so it can vibrate freely and independently along all the axes and all the particles are vibrating in different axes which are all independent of each other and the second assumption was made that all the modes of vibration or all the vibrations vibrate with same frequency right all the vibrations are having same frequency right so this was the two uh, assumptions made by einstein and accordingly he reduced the energy of the particle like this where phi zero is actually representing the constant part that is half h cross omega for all the vibrations and as well as, well as uh, some initial potential is there so all those things are included in phi zero and the variable will be like that summation over i h cross omega i e, uh, exponentially by kt minus 1 so again the specific heat can be deduced like this and so we have this equation for specific heat so put that uh, h cross omega e by kt equal to x right so cb is uh, taking a term like this so you can see that the summation actually reveals 3n because for a single particle it can have three basic vibrations so on summing all the possible vibrations of all the particles we will be having three vibrations for all the n particles so that is 3n right so once again we will be having the equation of cv as 3n k e of x where e of x is called the einstein's function right e of x is called the einstein's function so when t tends to 0 the value of x tends to infinity and e raised to x minus 1 will be almost equal to e raised to x itself so that uh, i will be getting an equation for cv like that and at the extreme uh, reverse extreme case that is when t tends to infinity x is tending to 0 so the exponential can be almost 1 by x so putting that in the equation of ex and cv i will be getting the classic equations that is actually called the long petit law cv is equal to 3r for n equal to 1 that is if there is a one mole of gas its specific heat is equal to three times the gas constant 3r that is called Dulong petit law so as you can see in the figure the dashed line is actually uh, representing the results of einstein's prediction at the same time the line with the uh, solid line solid curve actually represents the experimental value right so as you can see from the figure itself there is a, uh, some change at high temperature regions both the graphs are coinciding so there is no much difference between them because both of them will be yielding the classical result that is no long petit low but towards the lower temperature region there is a, uh, a difference between both the graphs experimental as well as einstein's theoretical prediction 
so which means that something is short in the case in the assumptions of einstein right so from here debate took over and he proposed a new model with some changes in that of einstein so the major changes were according to einstein all the vibrations were independent but debay said that the vibrations are not independent they are actually interdependent that means the vibrations of particles affect the vibration of other particles right and also the second uh, change he made was that all are not vibrating with the same frequency but instead it is having a continuous spectrum of frequency starting from zero up to and limiting value omega d which is called debay frequency so that the integral over zero to omega d the density of states will be giving you out 3m right according to einstein also the total number of vibrations were 3n but there he assumed that all the particles and all the vibrations are having same frequency but in this case debay assumed that the particles are having not the same frequency but instead they are having a continuous spectrum that is starting from zero to an upper limiting value up to debay frequency so he deducted all the values for g of omega and uh, obtained an equation like this and once again we said that they it is the vibrations are having two transverse and single longitudinal mode so that is done here so the first particle is multiplied first uh, state uh, term in this equation is multiplied with 2 that's why the 2 in the denominator is cancelled out and the second is for longitudinal that is only single vibration mode so the total sum of all the vibrations will be equal to 3n so again on integrating and applying the limits i'll be getting like this and it can be simplified right so 3n is equal to v omega d cube by 6 pi square into 2 by c t cube plus 2 by c l cube where c is the velocity of corresponding phonon okay so c t is the velocity of transverse phonon and c l is the velocity of longitudinal phonon so that i can detect an equation for omega d or omega d cube like this and once again the number density or local density of states can be detected and which can be obtained using the same assumption of two transverse mode and single longitudinal mode and we can here substitute the bracket from the equation of omega d cube right and we will obtain that is g of omega as 9 n times omega square by omega d cube okay so this equation will be valid only when the frequency of vibration is less than or equal to that of omega d because the vibrations as an upper limit or the maximum value of vibration frequency that can be have by a particle will be omega d so for all the values of omega greater than omega d that g of omega will be zero okay so let us calculate the energy of this system so for that we can substitute instead of g of omega as 9n omega square by omega d cube and on simplification i will get like this and let us apply or put h cross omega by kt equal to x at the same time the value omega d changes to x maximum or i can say denote it as x zero itself so which is theta d by t or theta d is called d by temperature right so on substitution we will be getting the like this and let us consider two extreme cases that is when temperature is very high so the value of e or energy will be proportional to x square as we said earlier in the case of einstein's law but integral of x square dx and on applying the limits i will be getting this value right so as you can see on cancelling out all the part uh, relevant terms i will be getting e is equal to 3 nkt as well as cv is equal to 3 nk which is again the classical result as per predicted by the dulong petit law right so but on the other extreme we will be having a slight change so this is the equation and accordingly we will be having e proportional to t raised to 4 and cv proportional to t cube 
which is actually called the device T cube low, right? Which we will be discussing in the later session, right? So once again, we have the equation for energy like this, and C V will be d by d t of E. So on taking the derivative of with respect to uh, temperature, I'll be getting a larger equation. And let us put x equal to h cross omega by t as we did in the previous one, right? So x zero is theta d by two, or x zero is the extreme value of x. So once again, I'll be getting an equation like this for moderate value of temperatures. Say C V is equal to three n k times a function of temperature or x called d x zero, that is d by function, right? So this is called Debye function, d x zero, and on integrating by parts, I'll get it like this. So we have two terms, right? So once again, when temperature is very greater than theta d, it can be expanded like this. So at higher temperature regions, the equation of uh, Debye function. Will be obtained as a series that is one minus x zero square by two d plus so on. So when x is very small, that is approximately equal to one itself, right? So x zero square can be neglected and the first term remains. So that the wave function will be almost equal to one itself, right? So which will be again giving out the classical result that is C V is equal to three and k. But once again, uh, for the lower temperature regions, there is a slight change of equation. That is the first term in the equation, or uh, in the previous one, that is d, the green equation, the uh, equation the green, and the first term will be of the order of zero in that case. And as a result, we'll be having an equation for d x zero like that. Okay. So substituting that in the case of C V, so we'll be getting S C V. Which is proportional to T cube, right? For T is four sixty four point four into T by theta d whole cube, or it is proportional to uh, T cube, right? So this is actually the T cube law of Debye. Debye's T cube law. So as you can see in the graph, towards the lower temperature region, very low temperature region, it actually obeys the T cube law. Okay. So as temperature rises, it gradually separates from that. So the solid line here actually represents Debye's prediction, while that of dashed line actually the Einstein's prediction. So as you can see, uh, the dots along the Debye line are actually the values corresponding to experimental results, which is done for copper. So it is obvious from the results that. The experimental value is actually coinciding with that of Debye's predictions. Okay, so Debye, uh, Debye's model is more accurate than that of Einstein's predictions. So this is all about the field of sound waves. Thank you.